everyone, I'm Abby Sharp from Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a highly requested YouTuber, San Bleu. So before we get into this, I want to of course remind you that this video is for entertainment purposes only and is not intended to prescribe or diagnose. So you should definitely always speak to your doctor and a dietitian about an eating routine that is best suited to you. Okay, so let's get into this. Now, Sun is a 24-year-old former Victoria's Secret model who's created a YouTube channel to share her personal health journey, fitness routines, what she eats as a model, and otherwise fabulous young model life. Now, instead of reviewing only one What I Eat In A Day video, I'm going to review three videos to make sure that I'm covering a variety of meals. I mean, my goal here with these What I Eat In A Day reviews has always been to use them as opportunities to debunk misinformation, promote balance, and celebrate a healthy relationship with food. But I sometimes worry that occasionally kind of gets lost. So I wanna make sure that I'm bringing that back as best as I can. So I'll be reviewing a variety of meals from different videos so I can give you feedback on the philosophy and overall balance. And also spend less time kind of nitpicking diet stuff, which really isn't my style. And then more time discussing some of the problematic claims and reasons that I like the channel in general or don't. Okay, so let's dive in. Let's take a look at one of her breakfasts. I do change up my kind of smoothies. Sometimes I go for more like veggies, sometimes more for fruit. Today I'm going to make uh, another green smoothie. And the base is going to be some frozen spinach. And I'm adding some frozen broccoli. I'm going to use one banana. You can also use a frozen banana. Then I'm going to add half an avocado. And then we're going to add one teaspoon of flaxseed. If I want to have a little bit of a lighter smoothie, what I do, I use half oat milk and then I use half water. This is organic hemp protein and I just got this one on Amazon. It has no flavor, so it is very neutral and you can just add this to like any recipe you want. Okay, so here's the thing about protein powder. I believe that they are a super convenient, easy way to sneak in extra protein without really contributing a whole lot of flavor. But in the case of Sen's portion for this hemp protein powder, I'm not that sure what the point is. So for the brand that San is using, um, a four tablespoon pro serving provides 15 grams of protein. This means for the one tablespoon that she used, she's getting about 3.75 grams of protein. I mean, she's better off just like adding more flax or something so she wouldn't have to bust out a whole other container. Now, while I love the fact that she's using a plant-based protein powder, it may be beneficial to either, I don't know, measure out a larger serving so she can actually reap some of the benefits, or perhaps use a different protein powder like pea protein, which actually has around 20 to 25 grams of protein per scoop. Otherwise, I mean, it's a solid smoothie. Um, I like that there's fat in it and veggies for the fiber. I just feel like if you're feeling like you need a source of protein, uh, just like go for it. Okay, so let's take a look at video number two. For me, what does a detox day mean? It means I eat very, very clean with very wholesome foods, uh, barely any processed foods. And before I'm going to start this video, I just want to tell you guys as well that this is not how I eat every day. This is um, more how I eat like when I feel, when I travel a lot, or when I party a lot, or when I had a lot of like holidays, and I kind of want to like eat very clean and like reflush my body system. Now, before I start this one, um, I realized, like she said, that this isn't every day for her. However, it does bring value to see a day like this in comparison to some of her other days. You guys know I am not a fan of this cleanse yourself rhetoric. I mean, even if you have been traveling and drinking a lot, your body still deserves to eat. Um, but having said that, let's take a look see at what she is eating and considers a detox. So the reason why to drink uh, lemon juice early, first thing in the morning is um, it just really helps with your digestive, uh, digestive system. And some people also put it in like hot water. Um, I don't personally really love it, but you can do that as well. Uh, also, what I'm going to start with is drink a lot of water. 
I almost drink like one of these bottles like in the morning and especially when I'm detoxing I drink so 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 much water to like flush everything out. Why does every YouTuber feel the need to perpetuate this misinformation? Sure, lemon water or tea may be more exciting than plain water, but it won't increase your digestion of your food. I mean, our stomach is very, very acidic and adding a little bit of acid or like lemon juice isn't gonna change a whole lot. So let's put this pH diet myth to bed. Okay, what's next? Take a matcha without like any milk, but I'm gonna drink a little green tea I am going to bring my package to the office um, and get a little bit of work done and then I will see you guys for breakfast again. For breakfast we're going to make a hydrating and detoxifying smoothie. We start with a bunch of frozen kale, some frozen spinach and frozen pineapple. The ginger really helps to detox the body and will give the smoothie a very fresh taste. Then I add one and a half cup of coconut water. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> This breakfast is leaving a lot to be desired. Obviously, it's really low in calories without much protein or even that much fat or carbs. I mean, it's a lot of just vegetables. Now, I fully get that after a big night of eating or drinking, sometimes your body is just not wanting a big, heavy meal. I mean, that is totally common and not really the issue here. The issue is that she's prefacing this meal that she's trying to detox and that is why she's choosing these low calorie foods. And that is a little bit where I'm turned off. Let's hope that video number three is a little bit better. Side note, ginger is delicious and it has a lot of health properties, but it does not inherently detox your body. Next. Chia seeds, cacao nibs for chocolate flavor, some frozen mixed berries, one banana to make a smoothie a little sweet, and a raw beet. I'm always trying to put superfruits in my smoothie. It's such an easy way to get them. So I'm going to add one teaspoon of chia seed and the rest I'm going to use for the topping. And then I'm going to add one teaspoon of cacao nibs. Who doesn't love some chocolate for breakfast? Then I'm going to add one cup of oat milk. Of course, you can use any other like plant milk, like almond milk, cashew milk, but I find oat milk the sweetest. So we're going to put this up and then we're going to mix it up. So I'm going to use a little bit of toppings, cacao nibs, and here's some coconut chips. Ta-da! My smoothie bowl is ready to serve. Okay, so this is a solid portion and a very pretty breakfast. I mean, we do know that a higher protein breakfast will keep you satiated longer. And it's always nice to see protein evenly distributed throughout the day for blood sugar purposes. But if she's a carb person in the morning, then th that's cool with me. I mean, thankfully, the fiber in the fruit, the cacao nibs and the chia seeds will help with that blood sugar regulation a bit, but still, I would say most people would be pretty hungry shortly after a meal like this. So let me give you my overall thoughts on her breakfasts. Sam clearly likes her liquid breakfasts. And while it's not something I recommend people have every single day, if she enjoys it and it works for her, it works for me. My biggest concern is that they're practically all carbs and there's not a lot of protein going on here. Research does suggest that having a protein-rich meal in the morning can help improve satiety and help you feel less hungry later on in the morning since protein helps to increase peptide YY levels, which is a hormone that helps keep your hunger levels at bay. If she feels good and this holds her for a while, then amazing. But for most people, my recommendation for a satisfying breakfast would maybe be to add some more protein-rich foods to her smoothie. So things like nut butter, more hemp seeds, soy milk, uh, which is higher in protein than the oat milk, Greek yogurt if you're not vegan, silken tofu, or a higher protein protein powder like pea protein. Let's take a look at her lunches now. Ta-da, my macro bowl is ready. This doesn't look delicious, I don't know. One appetit. I feel there are always like two people in their vlog. People who have a bowl like this and completely like mess it up and mix it up. And then you have people who like eat it like nicely bite by bite. 
Um, I think uh, I'm gonna eat this uh, bite by bite and like enjoy it to the fullest. Um, I'm gonna uh, run out for me. So this bowl looks seriously delish, almost too pretty to eat really. She's got a nice combination of fiber from all of the veggies and the fruit in there. She's got protein from tofu and beans, as well as healthy fats in the oil, the tahini and the hemp seeds, and of course that big avocado. I am happy to see her step up her protein game at lunch, even if ideally we would want to see this spread out a little bit more throughout the day. Okay, let's take a look at her detox day. Ugh. I'm scared. Boil some water and add the broccoli in here. I grab a little bowl and add four spoons of olive oil. Then I add one tablespoon, one teaspoon of turmeric, a pinch of salt, and you need to add pepper to boost the turmeric. This step is very important because the kale will be soft and much easier and tastier to digest. Okay, so this salad sounds delicious, like maybe it's like a side salad, but again, it's feeling a little restrictive in light of the whole detox thing. I don't know, I'm just feeling a lot of goop happening right now, goop inspiration, and I'm not loving it. So apparently detox means pretty much just eating vegetables, but protein provides so much nutrition to the body that it's, it's really important even on days that you're detoxing, I mean, whatever that means. The protein is going to help keep you satiated and energized and help stabilize your blood sugars throughout the afternoon. Also, eating super low calorie and clean in response to overeating and partying too hard often actually backfires. The next day, you often feel so deprived, you bounce right back to the opposite end to overeat again, and the cycle just continues on. Not loving this day. I will say that she was totally right when she said that you need to add some black pepper to boost the absorption of turmeric. So this is actually true. This, there's a compound in pepper called piperin, which helps to increase the absorption of turmeric, which is otherwise poorly absorbed into the body. One claim that she did make that was only partially true is the greener the salad, the more antioxidants it has. Now, green vegetables are super high in antioxidants, but other colored veggies are really high as well. And we can't get all of the powerful antioxidants our body craves just from greens. For example, orange foods provide carotenoids, red gives lycopene, and dark blue and purple give anthocyanins. These are all plant pigments with really powerful antioxidant properties that pack a really big punch of real nutrition. So you don't want to kind of scare away or shy away from eating other kind of colorful foods just because you're trying to get in your antioxidant rich greens. Let's look at lunch number three. I have arugula, I have like spinach, I have the lentils which are cooled down by now, and I have fresh pumpkin, my favorite. I'm gonna grab some fresh greens. This is the spinach. I'm just gonna do a mix of spinach and arugula. And lentils. Okay, then I'm going to add pumpkin with the red onions. This is a perfect one. Cut a little bit. Then I'm going to add some roasted pumpkin seeds. And I'm going to add some fresh mint and fresh coriander. This lunch looks so freaking good. Love that San added lentils and a hard boiled egg for some protein. The avocado obviously gives those healthy fats. And again, lots of beautiful vegetables. Overall, this lunch provides a good source of carbs, fat, fiber, and protein that will no doubt keep her satisfied for hours. Looks awesome. Okay, so let me now give you my overall thoughts on lunch. Overall, I think she's getting plenty of veggies into her lunches, which of course is important for vitamins, minerals, and fiber. What's more, she uses excellent sources of healthy fats like avocado and olive oil. And it's also really nice to see that, at least not on detox days, she's not afraid of oils and fat. I will say that of course her lunches on day one and day three were much better than on the cleanse day because they included some kind of source of protein. So if you're looking for some mealtime inspiration, I recommend looking towards those days. Now let's look at those dinners. Awesome.
awesome. So this looks really, really good. And I would totally crush that right now. I love curry. Um, and it's awesome that she does in this in this video talk about how she makes extra for the next day. And I also love that she uses the rice cooker to take a little bit of the legwork out of the cooking. Um, again, the simpler we can really make things for ourselves, the much easier it feels to eat really healthy, nourishing foods. But honestly, I do think this is a really well-rounded and delicious meal. The brown rice gives us those slow digesting carbs and fiber. It's got tons of veggies and fats and a good source of protein from the chicken. She also uses some really awesome spices to make the dish look and taste so so amazing and I also I love pineapple in my rice too so I definitely want this some tea I put a little bit of oat milk in there this is like chai tea and obviously synchronized I also have a little piece of dark chocolate and I'm eating this one from Whole Foods and it's like a truffle one so 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 good okay just like finishing off her dinner with something sweet totally my style i also love the spices in chai tea and i think the combination of chai tea and chocolate is pretty awesome so this i can get on board with let's take a look at video number two where i have a feeling we won't see chocolate the onion carrot and one cup of celery this is more or less three sticks when the onions are soft and brown you're going to add the garlic two cups of cute butternut squash and the sweet potato and three bay leaves. In the last five minutes, I add some extra kale and wait until it's soft. And then the soup is ready. What are you eating, baby? My butternut squash. Sweet potatoes, quinoa, vegetable soup. Okay, so still a super light meal, but I would say a lot better than some of the previous detox options. So here we see at least some chickpeas and quinoa, which will provide some plant-based protein and carbs. Um, the butternut squash and sweet potato also give some slow digesting carbs. And there's lots of really great vegetables in here, which is great to see. Again, I get that some days you just don't feel like big heavy meals and your digestion maybe feels a little bit sluggish or off. That's cool. Do what you got to do. But I just don't want people thinking that they need to purposefully restrict themselves or detox all day if their body actually wants full meals. Let's take a look at video number three. Okay, I just need to stop right there because I see so many missteps with the pasta and it's just driving me crazy. Um, one, bigger pot for that pasta. We need to give it some room to bloom, so to speak. It needs more water uh, than what you're giving it right there. Two, don't rinse your pasta before you put it into the sauce because you're rinsing off some of the surface starch, which helps the sauce stick to the pasta. And also you're rinsing off any flavor that you maybe added by like salting the water. So just don't do that. Okay, continue. I feel everyone will really love this. You can, oh, wait, I forgot my pan and lunch. Um. <laughs> oh. This is a vegan version. If you do eat some cheese, I would highly recommend to put a tiny bit of Parmesan on here. So, yeah. Okay, okay. So, I'm a pasta lover and I do love this dish. It just goes to show that just because you want to eat more plant-based, I mean, with the exception of the Parmesan cheese, it doesn't mean you can't enjoy foods that you've always loved. I will say that cashew sauces can be very pricey depending on the cost of cashews in your region. So just keep that in mind. However, it's awesome to see that she's trying out different kinds of noodles and experimenting with different kinds of flavors. So chickpea pastas, like the one that she's using here, I love them. They're high in fiber and protein. So it's actually something that I cook a lot in my home, especially for my carb loving kid. If this was my dish, I don't know, I probably would throw in like a can of chickpeas or maybe some more vegetables, but it looks like a really satisfying, delicious, beautiful looking meal. 
Okay, so my overall thoughts on her dinners is that they seem like the most substantial meals of the day. I'm seeing a little bit more protein, a little bit more fiber, a little bit more carbs, and all of the recipes look really enjoyable and relatively easy and definitely like something that I personally would want to eat. So now let's talk about the overall picture here. Number one, are these meals balanced? So Sam seems like a really great cook with some super mouthwatering meals. She has a fantastic grasp of spices and really knows how to make dishes look flavorful and enjoyable. I appreciate that unlike a lot of YouTubers, it doesn't seem like she's specifically cutting out any major food groups. So I am seeing a lot of different foods throughout her days. And while her detox day was definitely low in calories and not something I am personally jazzed to see, day one and day three averaged around 2000 calories, which seems like a really reasonable place for her. So for those of you guys who are thinking that Victoria's Secret models must starve themselves, I think that this video would suggest that it's not necessarily the case. If we want to chat about some general nutrition recommendations that I kind of brought up in this video, I would say again that most people do benefit from spreading their protein out throughout the day. Um, but in general, I do think there's some balanced options in the mix. So if a higher carb breakfast works for her, it works for me. Now, is Sam missing out on any specific nutrients? Again, I would say she probably could up the protein a little bit, even though I am happy to see them coming predominantly from plant-based sources. Ensuring she's getting enough protein will definitely help her feel fuller longer, support her during her busy, busy day, and help with muscle building and maintenance and just her overall health in general. Also, I don't see a lot of omega-3 fatty acids in her diet, which again are extremely important for heart health, brain health, and many other body functions. Although some nuts and seeds are good sources of omega-3s, the omega-3s that they're rich in are the ALAs, and they're not very high in EPA and DHA, which have been shown to have the best benefits for our body. Unfortunately, ALA omega-3s are not converted very well to EPA and DHA in the body. So we really need to get these nutrients from our diet. So looking at things like fatty fish, eggs, some algae, these are common options as well as taking a supplement. I'm also not sure what her supplement regime looks like as she doesn't really mention it, but that would be my major recommendation for her. Now, am I seeing any problematic claims or assumptions? Okay, so I know working as a Victoria's Secret model comes with some unrealistic body standards, but this whole detox day really has me a little concerned and disappointed. Yes, I get that the modeling world is a hot spot for diet culture, so I can only imagine how normal this language is, but we really need to get away from the detox focus. Our bodies are incredibly intuitive and can handle the occasional weekend bender or a few long days without needing to undo the damage with a overly restrictive diet. By fueling our bodies with wholesome, nutrient-dense calories, we're giving it all it needs to do its job. Again, I know that her detox day wasn't a normal day, but that video really showed some wrong messages about nutrition and how our bodies work. For example, if you really enjoy drinking pure lemon juice, that is totally cool. I mean, your teeth might not feel so great, but a simple cup of water and like a nourishing meal will kickstart your digestion perfectly fine. Okay, so now let's talk about some of my favorite takeaways from Sam's channel. Number one, she doesn't cut out any specific food groups. I love the fact that Sam doesn't identify with any specific type of eating style. I mean, some days she eats fully plant-based and some days she doesn't. Although sometimes she makes videos on dairy-free or gluten-free foods, she doesn't seem to follow any specific way of eating religiously. She embraces all types of foods and I can totally get on board with that. Number two, she seems more interested in paying attention to nutrients, not calories. So in two of these videos, she does mention the calorie count of her meals. And that's because of course she's being sponsored by a calorie counting app. But she does mention that she uses the app specifically for tracking nutrients to make sure she's getting everything in and doesn't really pay attention to the calories per se. 
So for example, in one video she expresses focusing on calories doesn't really tell us the whole picture and that for example a nutrient dense salad may have 400 to 500 calories but a bag of chips may only have 150 calories. Obviously, the salad would be a better choice, and she mentions that, but if you only focus on the calories alone, then you miss out on so much good fueling nutrition. I mean, honestly, I'm still not totally sure if the partnership with the calorie tracking app is like perfectly aligned if this is her stance, but honestly, that is her brand decision to make, not mine. But I'm at least happy to hear that she's more interested in getting enough nutrition, not just cutting calories. And finally, her recipes are produce packed, nutrient dense, and really delicious looking. San really knows her way around the kitchen and eats a ton of beautiful, colorful vegetables. It's clear that she always is looking for ways to make her meals both delicious and nutritious and shows her audience that Eating healthy foods does not need to be boring or complicated at all. Overall, I think that San has a great personality and seems to have a pretty good relationship with food, even if her choice in sponsorships is a little confusing. Although I would totally ditch the detox days, some of the questionable claims here, and maybe bump up her protein at breakfast a bit, I think that San is at least sharing a variety of tasty looking recipes that even I would really want to try out myself. So folks, that is all for today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with any YouTubers that you want me to review. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.